Hi, Lonnie and Kai. Welcome to the Corona Mama Zoom room. Hey, Angeline. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you so much for being here. I mean, really, I so appreciate you guys coming forward because so many people in your position would not. So tell the audience here, tell us what you, you know, introduce yourself and tell us why you really think this is important to be here. Okay. So my name is Lonnie. Hello, everyone. And um, this is my son, Kai. Hello. And we are still in quarantine with the coronavirus. And we, I mostly, as a mom and just as part of the community, really just wanted to share our experience because we aren't hearing anything about this. Um, we hear a lot of the news about new cases and deaths and all the doom and gloom and the scary stuff. But what about the normal people, everyday people, that where are all these cases? How come we're not hearing from, from them? So I felt like our story was a valuable one to share. There is, I think, a lot of shame. I mean, I know that my family went through a little scare and the people that were involved we, you know, I think that there's a lot of shame around what happens, you know, when you get COVID and there's kind of guilt and there's all these feelings and then nobody wants to really talk about it, even if they're kind of like even just going through testing because there's this fear that people are going to, I mean, I think that people are going to think something or not want to be near you or assume you did horrible things. What are your feelings and thoughts about that? Yeah, the, the shame and the stigma around the coronavirus has been, has been and continues to be such a big thing about it. People are just afraid of the backlash and about their, you know, reputation and just wondering and worrying, like, am I going to be at the grocery store and someone's just going to be like, get away from me or, you know, just any, anything like that. So this, this, the shame is definitely real and, um, you know, I definitely have been working myself with the shame, um, you know, coming out and telling the story has been one of the scariest, most vulnerable thing, things that I've ever done. So, but I want to do it in hopes that we can release this stigma and this shame and to know that, you know, this is a virus. It's unfortunately looking like it's here to stay and it's just a matter of time before we all get it. So why aren't we talking about it? Why aren't we sharing, um, our advice and our experiences with our community. Mm -hmm. Kai, I want to know from you, because I saw you nodding your head, about any thoughts of shame and guilt that's associated with having it, getting it. Uh, I think, I mean, I'm very lucky because a lot of my friends and like roommates have had a really like positive outlook on it, you know, and it's like, we've all been kind of expecting it to happen at some point. Like when it first out broke, like we're all like, oh, we should try and find somebody that has COVID and just get it right away because like, <laughs> because we kind of had that mindset, like, okay, like it's a super serious thing and a lot of people are gonna get it, you know what I mean? So I haven't personally dealt like with the shame part a lot, but I see, you know, like, especially hearing from my mom and how she had some of her clients were like not super stoked about it and they got kind of upset and they were just asking all these questions frantically, like, you know, it's understandable, but at the same time, you know, it's like, we can all see that it's a very, it's a very, um, it's spreading really fast. You know what I'm saying? So and the fact that it's happening, you know, it shouldn't be like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, it should be like, okay, well, what are the steps we can take to understand how this works with normal people? And then, you know, plan accordingly, take the proper precautions and then um, just kind of get rid of the shame altogether because, you know, it's like, getting the flu or like, you know, chicken pox. I'm sure if somebody older gets chicken pox, they're probably not going to be super stoked about it. But, you know, most of the population understands that people get chicken pox sometimes and it's not a big deal. So I think we should kind of take that same outlook with the coronavirus today. Well, as a young person, can you tell me what, I mean, I know that you're, you may be different from other people, but what are your, what do you think that people are thinking in the younger age groups? Um, it's kind of mixed, but mostly from my experience, people kind of are just like, eh, whatever, like, we'll just brush it off and kind of do our thing. Like, you know, when it was first happening, like, I kind of felt the same way too. I was like, 
yeah, like, I don't know, like, it's so far away from us right now, and I can't really see this affecting my life personally, but look where that ended up, <laughs> you know, we both got it, so it's kind of, it's very ironic in that sense, but um, the, the general consensus, I would say, is not, you know, we're not really taking it super seriously, because it doesn't affect us, you know, a lot, because I was, like, when this first started, I was kind of a little sick, and I was like, oh, is this COVID, like, and I got it, but I so I didn't test and wasn't sure if I was actually sick with it, but you know, I wasn't that sick and I was figuring it was COVID. And so I'm like, Oh, well, it doesn't affect me that bad, you know, like I'm not sick at all. But you know, then I started realizing that if I had gone out, you know, I didn't go out, thank God. But if I had gone out and given it to somebody, you know, that was elderly or had underlying conditions, you know, their family could have been affected for the rest of their life. That person could have died. That person could have passed it to seven other people, you know? So my personal consensus is that, it's, you know, it's pretty serious because I ended up getting it and now I know it's like real. So, and I, my biggest concern is that I just don't want to spread it to other people, but I think the young people of the community should realize, you know, and maybe not like, you know, I'm not one to tell people to just like, don't do this or live your life this way, you know, because everybody has a right to do what they want and that's totally fine. But at the same time, you know, I think we're all, you know, all the good hearted human beings out there, which is more than a lot of people would think you know, should take those steps to kind of be more cautious and have other people in mind when they go out to do things or like when they go to a party or whatnot, you know, like just, just be safe. That's all it is. But I think young people need to realize that more, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, Kai, do you want to tell us about your experience? And then Lonnie, you can tell us about your experience of what happened? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we'll start back in Oahu because that's where I live. I just finished school, so I live with my two roommates over there. Um, when this all happened, we all got laid off. So my two roommates and then my one other really close friend, we were all just hanging out a lot, you know. And we were already in close contact before, so I feel like that wasn't too big of an issue. But And you guys are in your 20s? Yeah, we're, we're 20. My I'm 20, and my two roommates and friend are 21. So um, Okay. So yeah, we're like just out of college. We're all kind of just working right now and stuff like that. So kind of like bachelor lifestyle a little bit. <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, super fun. So, so when the thing first happened, we all got kind of laid off and we're all just surfing a lot and whatever. Like we're just going to the beach and kind of hanging out. Like we did take it seriously though. Like I remember my one roommate was like, oh, we should like, Bethany's having dinner tonight with like five, six people. And I was like, eh, like, I don't know if I want to go, you know, so I didn't end up going. Like, I was like, eh, I'm kind of just like, it's not, I mean, it was a nice excuse to get out of going to dinner. Like, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know, it's like, I'm kind of trying to think about it. Like, ah, I don't really want to catch it just yet, like this early. But anyway, so my one friend, uh, we we're all hanging out and he starts feeling weird. Like he started kind of getting sick. And then we were like, oh, what's going on with him? Like, and all throughout this, like we were still in close contact because you, as you folks may know, like you're contagious even before you start to show symptoms. Like once you catch it, you're already spreading it. So I figured I was like, ah, if he's sick already, then I'm guaranteed like, cause I, we were just talking and hanging out like driving the car together and everything. So we started, I ended up kind of staying home and not really doing much. And then I got kind of sniffly and I was like, oh, this isn't good. But then I ended up taking like a lot of supplements and snapping out of it and I was fine. And then I was just around him for a long time. So I had thought I got it. Ready. So that ended up fine. We all got better and whatever. Then I fly. So fast forward, fly to Maui. Um, I'm hanging out for a little while. I was here for probably like a week and a half or maybe two. And then I start feeling sick again. So I'm like, uh oh, this isn't good. And so right when I started feeling sick, I just stayed home. Like I didn't go anywhere. I just stayed on the couch and I ended up just taking all the supplements and like, so. Did you have thoughts of COVID like at that time? Like, Oh, maybe this could be. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't, I didn't know because prior, you know, when we got sick, I was like, like I said in the previous conversation, like, Oh, it's not that bad. Like I'm not even that sick. You know what I mean? So it might not be bad, but, but, or like assuming that it me that the context is assuming that it's COVID that I had. So, you know, I'm sick again, but you know, this time I'm like with my mom and I, I had been seeing people like I was going to the skate park and kind of hanging out and working with my dad and whatnot. So I was like, oh, I better just stay home because I, this time I got a little more sick. Like I was in on the couch laying down and I was super like really fatigued. That was the most thing that happened to me. Like I didn't, I was supposed to go and work out in the yard that day with my dad. We're working on a project and 
I just felt super tired. Like I couldn't, you know, I mean, I could if I really forced myself, but it just didn't feel like good. You know, I wouldn't have had a good, enjoyable time. And I just had kind of like a head cold, like a little bit of sniffles and congestion, but nothing major. But the main thing was I was just super tired. So that lasted for two days. But then um, in the meantime, I was taking a lot of supplements and vitamin C and whatnot to ensure my health. So after the two days, I was totally fine. And meanwhile, I had never te- um, had a uh, fever at all. And I was constantly checking myself for a fever to make sure, but I had no fever. And so I was totally fine after the two days. And I was like, wow, that's cool, you know? And then um, that's when my mom started, uh, ended up having some troubles. So if you want to <laughs> tell them about that. So, so no, one second. So you had no fever and were you coughing? No like, cough. Some no of those fever. normal symptoms that you hear about? No fever, no cough, no diarrhea, nothing like that. Like I was just literally like, just felt like the common cold. I was like, oh, I've had this a thousand times before, you know? So I just took the proper precautions and it ended up going away. And like, we still can't necessarily say that it was COVID because I got tested after my mom tested positive. So she could have gotten an outside source, maybe not from me, but I'm, you know, my own personal hypothesis is that (laughs) I have COVID because we were just in such close quarters, you know what I mean? And from something like that. But. And still it's hard to say because there's so many viruses going around right now that people think that they may have. So Where, really it is hard to say. And, and yeah, thank you for taking those precautions and just staying home. I mean, uh, that is so responsible of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so Lonnie, what are you, tell us about your story. So yeah, so Kai, and I'm, by the way, I'm a holistic esthetician, so I'm a business owner, and I touch people for a living. I'm in a very high-risk profession, which that's just a side note. So Kai fell ill those two days, and then about 10 days later, I started feeling like um, a little weird, just like kind of extra run down, and then the, and then the next day I was like, Ooh, I feel like I might be coming down, down with something. And on both of those two days, I was, I saw clients. So then luckily it was my weekend. And then by day three, I was like, okay, wow. Like I'm definitely coming down with something, same symptoms. So no fever, no respiratory, no coughing, but I just had that fatigue that Kai spoke of just that exhaustion and fatigue. Like you're so run down and you just have to lay down. And then by day three and a half ish, I lost my sense of taste and smell. And that's when I was like, oh my God, I better go get tested. So got tested on a Wednesday, got my test results on a Friday and indeed they came back positive. Then Kai went to go tested that, to get tested that next day. He got his results Sunday and he was positive. Mm-hmm. So up until now, Kai has had, Kai has been asymptomatic and you know, I had a contact um, on like the Department of Health and contact tracing. So I had 21 people on my list that I had to contact clients and a couple friends. And then, um, and then my esthetician who works for me, she had to do, she was exposed to me and had to call her clients. So it was, it was so intense, you guys. It was just, it was really hard. I think people don't realize how hard it is. Can you tell us the, the, I I think there's a lot of mental, emotional stuff that happens on top of the physical illness that you have to deal with all at the same time. So describe what what that was like. Yeah, that is definitely, I feel like the mental part and the anxiety can, for me, was almost worse than the actual like feeling sick part because it's just such an intense ordeal that's like on your mind because you're, 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 well, first of all, from the first moment you test positive, you're just like, like your whole body, you're just like, oh my God. And it's just like that reality of it setting in. You're like, oh my God, I'm a statistic. When, when they, when governor Josh Green does his little count, I'm going to be that (laughs) one on Maui. You know what I mean? Like, it's just such a like realization and then you have to sit with it and then you have to you know, there's a lot of denial, I think, that goes on with this too. It's like, oh no, I'm fine. You know, I was in contact with somebody, but I'm fine. But no, you're not fine. (laughs) Like this thing is such a huge responsibility. Getting COVID is a huge responsibility Mm -hmm. along with the illness itself. So it's just that 
mental anguish of caring and wondering if your client, you know, if my clients are, are okay and checking it on, up on them, anxiously awaiting all these test results to come back that seem like years, you know, to, to finally get, you know, all that information back. So if you were to say there were like stages of realize, you know, like there's stages of grief, it, right. or, can you describe maybe a few, like I went through this and then this and then this just so to give people an idea. Yeah. So like, again, getting that positive result, it was like, Oh my God, you just cry and you're on the phone in disbelief with the doctor, you know, moving into realization. Oh my God, what do I do now? So then it's like, you have to grasp, you know, a, a, your head around, I have to make a list. I have to sit down with a piece of pen, a pen and paper and write down every single person you've touched, come into contact with, family members, people they may have touched or been exposed to, you know, like gone out or had a dinner party or, you know, a little small gathering. So it's just, so then there's that. And then that is coupled with, now I have to contact them. And that's where the shame comes in because there's so much fear and shit and fear around the illness, the stigma and the fear that you're, you're basically telling someone their worst nightmare. And then, and then there's just so many highs and lows. It's like a roller coaster and I'm, we're still on it. I mean, every day is like an adventure. Five more days. <laughs> Five more days. Yeah. And it's like, it goes on and on and on. And your, your mind goes to all these different places to, have to like think about how you got it. And then, I mean, I'm thinking like, you probably think, oh, I should have done this or I shouldn't have done this or, you know, all those things that I think are like mini guilts, like, did I do that right? Or did I like second guessing yourself in a sense of, you know, if I only had, or maybe, you know, but we don't even know. So that's, I think what's really hard. Right? It's really hard and you can't, you can't, Think about that. You just have to keep moving forward every day. It's like, this is such a test too on your mental health and just your emotional health. It's like, not only are you sick and not feeling good, but you have to like rise to the occasion to be responsible for, for just the, the horrific nature of this virus, which is the being so contagious, mm -hmm. you know, and just doing, doing what's right, doing what's Pono. Like, what would you do? Like, even though it's really hard, you have to do it. Like, you just have to. And that's why I'm here today, is that it was hard, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, with, with the audience, with all these mamas out there that, you know, this is the reality. This is just what happens. I want to talk about what it was like for you to call your clients, call all those people that had different reactions. So... I am embarrassed to say that I got the call Friday morning and it wasn't until Friday afternoon after praying and meditating and just breathing and calling a few of my, my rock hard, solid pillar friends and, and family that are my support team to really just do it. And it was hard. I'm not going to lie. And the first few were really hard, but then I kind of was like, okay, I can do this because it's a very mixed bag of emotions. It's some people were so supportive and loving and just understanding. While, like I said, those few were just upset and angry and fearful. And with, with further inquiry as the days went on, it's like, oh, well, I have this underlying health condition or, oh, I've seen my family member go through this. And so it's just like, there's always something underneath. So it was extreme, extreme, um, like just, it was scary. It was just a really scary thing to have to go through. Because <laughs> you don't know how someone's going to react, if they're going to be mad yeah. at you or like freaked out or, or supportive. Yeah. And, you know, I just wanted you to talk about that because I think a lot yeah. of people, if they can think ahead of, if somebody has to call them, how do I want to react? How do I, how do I want to receive that information? And maybe you can be supportive to the person who has the COVID because they're going through a lot. Yes. So that's why I'm asking you in that way. So people really know and see. 
Yeah, and normally the Department of Health does those phone calls, but I took that matter into my own hands because I figured, okay, these are my clients. I love them, and I want the information to come from me so that and, and even if it's hard and they're upset, I'm going to take it. I'm just going to be on the phone with them. I'm just going to say, okay, I hear you. I understand, you know. And now what's so interesting is as I'm hearing more back from clients, um, you know, and clients that have heard my story about this issue, this, this particular thing, this is shame and the stigma. It's like, wow, Lonnie, you know, after such close contact with you, I experienced that shame and that stigma for my own family members that were giving me shit about like, you know, wow, you're seeing an esthetician at this time. Well, that's selfish or well, that's what you get for, you know, going to get a service. Wow. So it's real. And we got to stop you guys. We got to stop doing that because sooner or later, it's not just like a matter of like if it's a matter of when this is a global virus at some point we're all going to get it i want you to talk about transparency i mean okay. you are being you and kai are being extremely transparent and i think that's a healing thing i think that's a wonderful thing that everyone should do that's just my opinion everyone that's you know maybe that's ruffle somebody's feathers but that's just my opinion so tell me why you both feel like transparency is really important right now okay um i think it's important because you know when you're when you're dealing with something like this you know like you got you got to think of like the golden rule, you know, like treat yourself how others want to be treated. In the sense that, like, if you feel sick and you go out and hang out with your friends, and then they get sick and you say nothing, you know, then they're left in the dark. First off, you weren't being responsible, and second off, like now this other person has this huge burden on their hands, you know, and they don't even know, like. They might, you know, of course it's upsetting, but at the same time, like, we're all in this together because we're all part of this community, like, especially on Maui, because everybody's so tight, you know what I mean? So it's like, we want to make sure we can look out for each other. So if that person, you know, had just been transparent and taken that responsibility, like saying like, hey, I have COVID and following the, pro the proper steps, you know what I'm saying? Then it can, it can um, eliminate all that unneeded, like, worry stress and then you know possible injury and damage to people's lives so i think it's really important just to be like as open as you can about it you know what i mean like and and even in a sense too like if you're because i know it might not especially for kids my age like it might not be cool to like not go to the party or like not you know like like oh we're gonna go um camping with like 10 20 people whatever like you should come it's no big deal and you're like okay yeah like you know, they might decide to go, but you know, they like if they're wearing a mask and whatever, like they're gonna be like, oh, like, why are you wearing a mask or whatever? And, you know, like, because I'm in like a sketchy environment, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to be, it's okay to, to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Especially in this, especially in this time, because, you know, it's not about like, is that, you gotta think to yourself, like, is that one thing worth it to end up with like possibly a lifetime of all of this stuff, you know, like the, the damage to the family or, you know, your own shame, you could bring your own shame because if you're sick and go or whatever, or somebody else is sick and go, then they're going to be living with that for like the rest of their life because they acted kind of immaturely or, you know, improperly. And so, the result is huge, right? I mean, the result is not a tiny little thing. No, yeah, because it, it spreads so fast, you know, and it all it takes like, thank God we're all like me and my mom are being pretty smart. So we limited like the amount of people like, and you know, that's really key. So, but you know, some, some other people are going to live their life in different ways. So it might affect somebody really greatly, but you know, I think if, if you do get it, then definitely be transparent, like contact all those people and make sure that they're okay and whatever. And that, you know, cause people are going to look out for you. You know, a lot of people have people that care about them and that's really important, but you have to be, you have to be able to open up and let yourself, put yourself out there in order to receive that help that's going to come to you. You know what I'm saying? So I just think it's really important to try and, you know, I mean, it's, it's not really too complicated. Like if you get COVID tell the, call the people, that's all it is really, you know, just, 
be open about it. Like, hey, I have it. Like, contact your people, get tested, period. Like, let's stop this thing. That's all it's about. You know? so, <laughs> and also talk to the contact tracers, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, honestly. Talk to them. yeah mm-hmm. that's all it is. Like, that's, that's all you have to do. Like, it's going to suck, but just do it because you'll feel so much better afterward. Like, you want to live with that lifetime of like, oh, is anybody sick? I don't know. Or you can just get it out of the way in five seconds and then, you know, you start from there. You go from there in, in recovering and building that, you know, whatever, your life back up. Well, so that's awesome like that you're so people. responsible. Yeah, yeah. And, Lonnie, what's your feeling? Yeah, my, my thing on transparency, transparency, and it's starting to show more and more now, especially that we've gone public, is that it's only been amazing. It's only been positive. People, even the clients that were like, oh my God, kind of freaking out. um, I knew that anger wasn't directed toward me, really. I knew that it was the fear underneath of what was really going on. I feel like this is the ultimate test in strength and your judge of character. And it's, people are only gonna thank you in the end, you know? That's it. And, and it's like with a virus like this that's so contagious, it's really the only way to be. These are the times to have these kinds of conversations, even with friends. So have you been like doing a lot and hanging out with a lot of people? Like you have to ask these questions right now. And, and, and it has to be like kind of normalized. Just like I was saying, if you're going on a camping trip and you're wearing a mask, it's like if people tease you, well then, oh, well, like that's just, you know, we have to be transparent. It's kind of like I was thinking when Kai was talking, it reminds me of in a positive way, like, you know how excited you get when you were like a kid and you really liked someone and you wanted to tell that boy like how much you liked them and it was that anxiety and that it's almost like a feeling like that, but like not so positive, but that like, I got to make that step and I got to tell them that I really like them. Like, it's kind of like that. It's like, I got to make that step to tell this person I care about their health so much that I'm going to tell them. Even though it's hard, even though there might be shame and backlash, I know that deep in my heart, I'm doing it for the good of them, for the for their health, you know, because I care. Mm-hmm. Cool. And wearing a mask when you have all your yeah. friends saying, you know, why are you wearing a mask? To to do that too, to kind of I, care for them so much, say, yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. I'm, I know you at the party and I know you, but I don't know all these people and I'm going to still be at the party, but I'm going to protect myself and that's okay. That's my choice, you know. How does that feel for you, Kai, to be thinking in those terms? Like, do you think people can do that in your age group? Yeah, yeah no, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think in general, like, we shouldn't be having, like, big parties right away. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least not. Like, I get it. People are going to have, like, get-togethers. You know, I've had little get-togethers with friends that are in my circle, you know what I'm saying? But that's fine. Like, you know, just keep just keep your friends, like, have a small group, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, try to stick with that group as much as possible because once you step outside that realm, that's when the danger level rises and rises, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know, and you can be risky if you want, but it's not, you know, you're not really doing anything good for the people, you know what I'm saying? It's like... Is it really, like that, like I said earlier, like, is it really worth it right now? You know what I'm saying? Because that one little, you know, hour, two hours or whatever of fun is going to, and could end up in some really nasty, like, um, circumstances after, or the, the result, uh, what you call it, uh, consequences, that's the word. Consequence, saying. right. I yeah, think it's so, like, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, like, um, yeah, so like, and I'm like, I, like, people don't really, or they're not gonna like, uh, you're wearing a mask, like they're in fourth grade, you know what I mean? Like, nobody's gonna say it, but you might get like, weird looks or whatever, or just like, the, eye roll. Like, the vibe might not be like, it would be if you're just all hanging out, you know, but that's kind of the point, because it's not really a time to be like doing those things. So, you know. and then maybe it strikes the conversation somebody yeah. be, be like hey bro like why are you wearing a mask you you can be like well i just recovered from covid i know yeah. all about it my mom got pretty sick my mom had to tell 21 plus people you know that she had in you know you can tell your story it's like yeah. a, it's like an invitation to start these conversations and especially with your age group how valuable is that you exactly. know yeah yeah so, Mommy, i want you to tell people about how you wore all this protective gear 
in advance. I mean, how you were already thinking, oh, this is another thing I was thinking that I was going to say before was that if we think about how we're going to behave before we get to that point of, hey, do you want to go to the party? You know, like if we think about all those things ahead of time of what are my values and how am I going to behave before somebody tempts me or asks me, then when you get to that point, then you're like, okay, I already promised myself I'd do these things and I'm going to stick to it. So you don't have to kind of rationalize yourself out of it when somebody, someone's in your face, like, come on, come on, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, especially for someone like in Kai's age group, like I know for me, I've had, um, you know, like, I, I don't know, for me, I'm 46. So I'm like, kind of an old fart and I don't really go to parties or do anything if anything for me it's like a dinner party or something but I have been avoiding all that stuff I've just been been you know but if I were to go I would the precaution that I would take with what I would I would ask like so how many people do you see in your daily life I would ask the questions if I was really called to go to a small dinner party, I would ask the questions and I would wear a mask and I would social distance. That's just because now I know like the seriousness of it. What about you, Kai? Uh, yeah, like you just, you yeah. know, just be, but I wouldn't even, if it's outside my circle, like I'm not going to most likely just going to be like, nah, it's okay. Like, you know, I don't really know your friends or I've never been to your house before or whatever. So I'm just going to be like, no, it's okay. You know, because there's ways, there's ways to get through it. Like, and a lot of people, I'm not saying like parties are a thing right now, you know, like not a lot of people are partying, but you know, you do see like little guy, like the Baldwin outbreak, you know, there was like a little thing that happened at a rave there. And it's like, okay, why are we having raves in the first place right now? You know, like it's probably not the best idea. So like, it's not a big thing. And most of the situations realistically are like, you know, you're just, you run into a friend at the grocery store or like you're just, you just end up talking to people at the beach or something, you know, like there's just random little interactions and people like want to shake your hand and say, what's up and give you a hug and whatever. And it's like, dude, like think about it. Right? Like just, <laughs> I just stick my just, elbow out. Yeah. I do, I do I just fist bump. Like, hey. I just fist bump. I'm like, yo, what's up? And okay. This is another little tidbit. Handshake. Greeting people is getting really awkward because I've had so many, like, you know, where you go to do the fist bump and then yeah. they want to high five and then you both switch and it's like, oh my <laughs> God, this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me because now I have to live with, we just did that and it was terrible. That awkwardness. I was talking to a communications expert about that and they said, usually guys, they, yeah. they do, they do the thing like they, so they know what's going to happen. So maybe you could call it out like fist bump, you know. So, so what I do, so what you do is when you see them and you realize that you are going to have this interaction, you immediately put your fist up like this as fast as you can. So they have at least 5.7936457 seconds to, to, to identify that it's a fist bump and not a hand. Because okay. I have like, countless yeah, terrible like, oh, I'm going to shake your hand, fist bump, whatever. I don't know. That's just a small thing. But yeah, but so if you big, see someone, it's big. Yeah, no, because seriously, like shaking hands, you know, you don't, you touch your face and you have no idea. You're always doing weird stuff and you don't even think about it. So yeah. I think fist bumps is a good way to go. So like you see somebody, just put your hand up right away. Like, yo, what's up, dude? Like super far away. So they get it. They're like, okay, he wants to fist bump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, way far away. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yo, what's up? Just put your hand out there, you know? So or That's the elbow. really good I think advice. elbow's kind of weird, like fist bump. The elbow's is weird, yeah. yeah. This bump is good. So, yeah. But yeah, do it early. So there's no awkward, weird, you know, misunderstanding there because that's definitely not a good way to start the conversation. That's actually super helpful because most people aren't thinking that and they don't know how to deal with it. And so for you to just tell them how to do that, it gives them like, okay, got it. You know, and you could be saving lives right now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, could be, you could totally be saving lives just by that fact. Seriously. You know, yeah. So, so Lonnie, I want to talk about what you did to protect your clients. Wait, okay. you know, you thought about all this. You, you know, yes. what, what did you do? Cause I know you okay. did a lot. Yeah, I did a lot. Um, so back in June, when the quarantine lifted, um, estheticians were allowed to go back to work. Um, June 1st, I waited a week just to kind of see, because I was already just feeling a little nervous about going back to work because I do have a very busy practice. So I see between eight to 10 to 12 clients in one day, right? So it's a lot. And, um, 
And so I just thought, okay, I got to rethink everything. The first week back to work, I was in tears. But I have been working with the Hawaii Salon Forum, which um, in island wide, we got together as a community and, um, you know, did protocols and procedures through the DOH and CDC to make our opening safe and healthy for everybody. So we have a standard of all these guidelines that we follow. So what that entails is an intake sheet that it's like a detailed client history about your health. And then also a, a waiver of liability, meaning you take full responsibility of the close contact risk when you come to see me and you're responsible, right? So that feels good because it's just like, okay, this is, we'll get this out of the way and then do the temperature check, right? So upon arrival, the little wand that goes to your forehead. And then you just keep the paper trail just in case, which now doing the, the tracing, it was like I had all everything on hand. So that came in handy, you know, um, later on <laughs> getting COVID. So face and um, face mask and face shield, right? That is um, mandatory and then gloves. So I was doing all the procedures and protocols. And then of course, sanitizing in between each client at the end of the day, it's, it's a lot. So I had to increase the duration of the, each appointment time to make sure that I was ensuring all the cleaning and all the things. And, and then, you know, just running late each appointment, I find, um, there's a lot more heartfelt conversation just about the pandemic. People really want to talk about it. You know, we're, we're, we're not getting out as much. So any, you know, human interaction we have is so valuable these days. So I just, you know, made it so my appointments could be longer and I was still just cranking them out. Um, so as the tests, as the, as we started to get our second kind of round, like our second round of spikes, um, you know, and the spiking spikes in cases, I started to get really nervous and I was like, Ugh. and I just kept moving along and, and look, I got it. And I'm the first one in the beauty industry to get it in all of the state of Hawaii. So I'm working on um, some content to share with other beauty professionals. Um, but I am so proud to say that out of those 21 clients, plus my esthetician and all of her contacts that we have all tested negative. So out of that, out of that PPE, that is huge that I was working in the contagious, you know, cell shedding phase of this virus that they talk about, that danger zone window. I saw clients for those two days and no one got sick. Wow. That speaks a lot for the PPE, all the protective yes. measures you put in. Yeah. So I mean, I, everybody, there's a lot of people that think masks are a joke and they hate wearing them, but you know what, you guys, you got to wear them. Just and so, to, yeah, you're sharing all that you went through with the beauty industry so that they can know yes. how to deal with it, right? Yeah. So when I, when I tested positive, I did this kind of like step-by-step -step process. So of course called everyone immediately, right? My direct contact people. And then um, I did a client email to everybody. And then before I announced it publicly, I sent a letter out to the beauty industry people because I wanted to let them know that I want to share my story, but I'm going to do it in a way that protects and upholds our standards and our qualifications as professionals, which is like so much all about sanitation and cleanliness. I mean, that's what we learn in school is like so much of our schooling is about that very thing. So I am here to say that out of all things to do, getting a service may be the most safe thing that you do do, you know, if you're going to someone that's wearing your full PPE. And, you know, that is so important for people to know because our well-being emotionally is crucial to get those micro touches, to, to have services that really help our emotional and physical well-being. And I think we're being deprived of that. I mean, I just had to say that because if we are being so, so, so careful and we're just hiding in our homes, then we're actually hurting our health also. Oh, so we yeah. have to be aware and like cognizant of that and knowing that, I mean, this is like a mini study, like a little case study that you've done mm -hmm. accidentally to say, yeah. you can go to an esthetician or get a massage or do those oh. things and get that personal care Mm -hmm. or your well-being and you're going to be okay because i mean most people don't have covid when they do that 
and you did, and all your clients are negative. I mean, that, that just tells yeah. us that it's like a little case study of we can do this. It's this is yeah, good this for right. us. Yeah, the study of the PPE is huge. There was another one in the news. I can't remember what state it was. I want to say Georgia, where two salon professionals um, did cut haircuts all day long, and they both had COVID. But out of all the clients they saw, not one person got COVID. So that was another good case study that a lot of people talk about. So, yeah, I, I want to continue to help in any way that I can share my story so that it can help other beauty professionals, anybody in the community, if you guys have questions, you know. What are some of the things that you went through that you think people don't realize about going through it? Um, that's a great question. You know, it's such a mixed bag, but I have to say it's, it's a huge emotional roller coaster. It's like you're on this wild ride and every day you just don't know what's going to happen next. Um, meanwhile, you're sick and just taking care of your health. So again, you guys, back to the basics, right? This is all about our health. That's all we have is our health. It's our wealth. It's our most important. So it's like, let's take care of ourselves, especially now. So back to your question. I also think it's a huge time commitment. Like, I mean, I'm not only do I have to close my business and I'm unsure of when to reopen again, because of course I want to make sure I'm completely well, but also the emotional and the mental part. Like I want to take the time to really um, resource myself after, you know, this whole thing. I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm really taking care of myself in not just the ways of like the COVID thing, of course that, but am I well, am I well enough to, 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 to do this again, to work during a pandemic is really intense. Working with the public during a pandemic is hard. So I'm getting off track. What was the question again? <laughs> well, what do you think people don't realize? And, and those are things that people don't realize. Right. And so like, again, the time constraint. So, I mean, literally I have to take a month off of work basically. So that's a lot. Like I'm, I'm taking one month off and we've already been through two full weeks. Um, and then like the emotional roller coaster, like I said, and then, um, and then the financial blow. I mean, there's, when you know, we're not working. We're sitting here. Like, it's just, it's just a lot. It's, it's just a huge, huge experience. And it's such a huge chunk of your time. And, and then there's quiet moments, too, where there's so many moments of this experience that's just, like, isolating, quiet, like a time to just really go inward, you know, like we, we did when we all had to shut down back in May and June, you know, it's just, it's a really interesting experience to go through. Mm, a lot of internal stuff happening and yeah. thoughts mm -hmm. and probably checking in about a lot of values and things yeah. that come across when we're under attack in so many ways, in so many right. ways. Yeah. Kyle, ha what, what, uh, for you, what do you think people don't realize for people maybe in your age range? Um, I don't know. I or think, in general, maybe not even in your age range. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I haven't been, I've been really kind of passive about the, like, the quarantine and whatnot. Like, I think, I think people just don't realize how serious it is. Like, what it made me realize initially is that like wow like or when i found out that the few friends that did get tested were negative you know i realized that i was really lucky that nobody got you know um nobody got covid that i know which is like a blessing you know because i was seeing my grandparents too that were older like they're in their 60s and that could have been really bad you know so the main thing like i think is that we just need to all kind of like once you have it, you're like, whoa, I have it. You're like, what? Like you would never think it's gonna happen to you, you know? <laughs> and then it does. And you're like, what is going on? Like, I don't know what to do. But you know, as far as the quarantine, like I'm kind of just, I got my PS4, so I'm just playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of doing my thing. So it's not, it's uh, like a staycation, but it kind of drives you crazy. Like, so I think, I think it's good. Um, 
it's definitely good to have somebody that can spend nice and be with my mom and just, you know, because it would suck if I was by myself. Like, if I was back home, I probably would have had to just lock myself in my room and, like, yeah. not see anybody, you know, so. It's been good. If you can, try to get a buddy, you know. Don't, <laughs> do not infect them on purpose to be with them, but. So the main, so the main thing you would want to tell everybody is just, whoa, whoa, whoa it can happen to you, right? Yeah. Whoa, just, you're not invincible. Just, yeah, just remember, like, what it made me realize is that it's real and that your actions have serious consequences. And I was personally very lucky that they didn't, you know, affect people in a negative way in my actions, thank God, you know. So, but other than that, yeah, just, like, remember that it's it's here and it's real and, you know, just take the proper safety precautions. Yeah, Lonnie, do you have any other thoughts you want to share with people? Um, yeah, just that that um, it's it really is real, and to just wear your mask. And if you're scared of, don't be scared of getting COVID, guys. Because guess what? This is a part of our lives now. It sucks, but this is just the reality. And don't be afraid. You know, limit social media exposure and news exposure. Stay informed. You know, but it's just I would just have really if there was any one piece of advice I could give. It would just be, just be safe and just yeah. really listen to, to what feels good and just be responsible and know, know the risks, you know, just know the risks yeah, and wear it. your mask. Just be safe. Just take the precautions, you know, and live your life. Like live your life how you would, knowing the things that, you know, are, you should take into account responsibly for your friends and family and community. But other than that, you know, just do your thing. Like, go surf, go skate, go read a book, whatever, you know, watch a movie with your friends. But, you know, just be safe and make sure that you're not affecting their lives in a negative way. That's kind of like my philosophy in general. It's like, you know, do what you want to do as long as it doesn't affect other people negatively. You know what I'm saying? But you not taking precautions will affect other people negatively eventually. So please do it. And then I want to say one more thing quickly about the fear is that, you know, so many of my clients, when we would talk about the pandemic and what we're all going through right now, is that like everybody feels like their life is just at this standstill, at this stop. And yes, there's parts of that that are very true, especially for people who are planners in nature. Like they just naturally just want to plan out their lives. And yes, that sucks that we can't do that right now. But our lives are moving and still going. And just as the earth is spinning and nature has its cycles, it's like we can't just stop. Like we can still live a life in COVID. It's, it's, it's not that, that hard. We just have to be precautious and we just have to ask those tough questions and we just have to wear masks and we just shouldn't go shopping a lot and do those things that put us at risk, period. I mean, we're so blessed. We get to live on Maui. We get to take walks out in nature and go resource. There's so many places that we can do that in. So just do more of that, you know? <laughs> Well, I want to thank you both for being literally pillars of this community, pillars of Hawaii, to be so transparent to come forward when we know a lot of people have been getting COVID. I haven't heard anyone talk about it yet, like the way that you have so transparently. And so I'm just saying that I'm recognizing you as pillars of this community because Standing up is what we need to do right now. We need to stand up in so many ways, each of us caring for each other. And this is what you're doing. You're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for the community. So I'm just getting like chicken skin now because I'm, I just feel like, you know, we need to be really in this together. And this is a like a demonstration of you really believing in that. And if we all did that, we could really flatten this curve quick. We really then our economy would get better. Then everything would get better. <laughs> so, you know, we could. it's just, you know, we have to step aside, step aside and, and, and put ourselves aside, you know, in a certain sense to get through this, to keep going. And it's hard. We are all sacrificing every day in this damn pandemic. But, you know, we got to do it. Yeah, we, we talk on the show about actions of Aloha and we recognize people who are doing kind, generous things. This is the most kind, generous thing a person can do right now in this pandemic is what you have done. You have 
quarantine right away. You have done all the things that you need to do to protect people. And then being transparent with the immediate people that you think could be infected. And then coming on the show and talking to everyone and talking on your Instagram about and Facebook about what happened. I mean, that is like uh, huge, huge actions of Aloha. So uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my welcome. heart, you know, thank and for you. on behalf of everyone in the community that maybe isn't able to thank you, you know? Yes. Well, it's my absolute pleasure, you guys. And, um, and I just so want to thank my son, you know, because it's so huge to be a young adult and all the responsibility that even comes with that. It's just like getting to know oneself in this new stage of life. And I'm just so thankful that he was really open to do this too. So thank you, Kai. Yes. Big, 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 huge mahalos on that. I <laughs> totally agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking the time. You have something else? Yeah. And, and I just wanted to say that if anybody wants to follow me on Instagram, I'm going to be kind of sharing more of my journey and my story. Um, a lot of people wanted to know the supplements that I've been taking to help with symptoms and stuff like that. So my handle is Beauty by Nature Maui. That is my business name, Beauty by Nature Maui. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. I wanted to mention that I forgot. So <laughs> thank you. Any, any last words, Kai? Anything you want to say? Just be safe. Where are you now? people. Yep. Be safe and wear your mask. They save lives. Yep. They're not a conspiracy. They're helping people. Yep. Just wear it. Just wear it. Just wear it. That's it. It's fine. It's easy. Simple. Such Simple. a small inconvenience in the bigger scheme of the, the, the story. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.